looked natural. It just looked natural. Forget there, <laughs> forget there's a, a camera. Hey guys, uh, I've been tooling around the Sierras for a couple of days. Maybe you can tell. I don't know if you can tell. Can you tell? I, you... I more smell than tell. <laughs> <laughs> and we're catching up again. We did a video with Dave. Um, boy, it's been quite a few months now. Yeah. Yeah, it's been maybe even a year. It's October. been quite a while. Yeah. But what we have here is um, his daily driver. And the last video, which we'll link, talked about how he configured this rig to convert easily from very capable overland rig to daily driver. So you can check out that video. But Dave, you've gone and done something that's like, Dave's a do-it-yourselfer. Yeah. Dave builds stuff and he comes up with his own solutions. Tell us, what did you build? What did you do? I partially, I partially build out of necessity of finances, but also just because it's fun and yeah. finding solutions. So yeah. what I did was I built a wooden drawer that you highlighted mm -hmm. and I sold to a great guy named RJ who like lives in the next town over. Right hey, RJ. And right then um, what I wanted to do though was I wanted a drawer that was a little bit lighter because it was heavy to get in and then gave me more functionality. Right. And so I went with a little different direction than wood. I went with a direction of what's called extruded aluminum 8020 is commonly known. And so last time I talked about, I did a fancy math on my uh, blueprints on binder paper. And this time I got a little smarter. I'm still yeah. not like CAD certified, but I yeah. got grid paper. And I just, uh -huh. every grid, every single one was an inch. Right. And then it just made my life easier to design and get everything are, for this. Are those top secret plans like the SR-71 or are you going to let people look at them? It's, I'll let them look at them. This is a small fee. No. It's, <laughs> yeah, you just ask me for them. Um, okay. I'll put cool. them up on the do-it-yourself forum, which is a great resource on Overland Bound great. to be able to see what other people have done with their projects and solutions they've come up with. Yeah, so it, if you guys are interested mm -hmm. in either doing taking on a project like this yourself or you just want to see how Dave did this, you can go over to the do-it-yourself forum on Overland Bound and, and, and check it out. Plus, are, are you social? Are you going to talk to people in the comments? Yeah, yeah. Great. I'll, I'll, I'll answer questions. And Great. My um, thread is called Tacoma Overland Drawer 2.0, I think. Cool. Because 1.0 was last time, and this is 2.0. I'll link it. You don't have to remember that. All right, okay. get fancy. So so I haven't, I haven't seen the setup. This is my first time seeing it in person. So uh, I, I've seen pictures of it, and it's, and it's awesome. Um, anything else before we actually dive in? Anything else just about methodology or like how you did it or anything like that? You know, um, it's completely overkill, right? <laughs> I mean, all you really need is a sleeping bag maybe, and, right? right? This is totally overkill, but it's very applicable. I mean, I have almost 30 days out camping in the yeah. last year. Yeah. And so for me, it's really, it's proven really, really useful cool. in terms of setup time and all those different things. So. Uh, totally unnecessary, but I made it myself and I wanted something that met all of the functionality that I wanted, mm -hmm. be a little bit lighter than my, my other drawer and uh, just make the camping experience a little bit more fun when you've got people with you to be able to cook, prepare, clean, and leave. So. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy. All right. All right. So this is my 2.0 drawer. Right on. And I use 8020, like I said, it, it's still on big, long sliders, 500 pound sliders. Wow, that is clean. This is my th third color of blue that I chose. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> totally unnecessary, but um, I use coffee table lifts. Right on. To give me flat space because flat space is premium, right? As yep. you always say. Yep. And yep. inside of here, it gives me everything I need to set up camp and cook food, prepare, clean, and then I can just simply push it back in. All right. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. So um, I wanted to be able to cook and clean. I was able to, I got a, what's called a Dometic 9722. And this, it has burners and it also has a sink. <laughs> <laughs> All told, it took you about a minute to set up your kitchen. Yeah. Uh, but what do you say the setup time is? Five seconds? It's, it's five <laughs> seconds. I mean, I, I do got a scroach. Maybe 10. I have to push buttons to turn on power. But other than that, yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to B roll this later. Yeah. I have a couple of different buttons yep. that I put to turn on the pump for the sink. Mm -hmm. The sink is actuated by the lever there. Yep. And then I've got a light both inside and outside of the drawer. 
Let me ask you underneath um, for the water and the, the gas that comes back. Clearly, this um, collapses. What happens to that cabling or that tubing when, when this expands and collapses? So most of the tubing for the water is, is inside of here and it's kind of uh, bungeed up out of the way that takes up the slack so it doesn't catch on anything. Uh -huh. And then underneath I have, I use Velcro and this is the drain tube. Oh, got it. And so the drain tube comes down, <clears throat> the propane mount is right here. And what happens is, is that this canister just hangs from the bottom. You know, I, it's silly, but having water instantly available is actually a luxury that I didn't realize I how still, much I loved. I still get, I still pull out the 20 liter water canister and then I screw on the hose and then I place it on my tailgate and then I got to open up the little ventilator cap so that I get decent water flow and then it still dribbles all over on the floor. This is high society is what this is. It is. And is it necessary? <laughs> no, but I thought it's, I'm going to try to it's build it. It's awesome. So. It's awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. So a little Dometic unit. Hey, uh, get three quotes. So you, <laughs> you, you got this on eBay. And then for the sake of being light, this is 3 16th plywood. Okay. Because on the sides of the drawer, I didn't need as much strength. I just right. needed some kind of containment. So you did consider weight cons yeah. considerably when you were, yeah. when you were building this. That's, that's cool. This polyurethane then paint. Yes. Cool. And then up here, this is HDPE. This is the same material that you use for your, like a cutting board. Okay. And, and is it a plastic material or is it fiberboard or what is it? It is plastic. It's a plastic material. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes called starboard in marine applications. So you had a very specific um, dimension that you needed. How did you get it made to your very specific dimension? So I went to Tap Plastics, which is a regional, I think, yep. uh, plastic supplier, and you can give them exact dimensions. Uh -huh. And then I also did a cutting board. Awesome. Same material. So you tell Tap Plastics, hey, here's the dimension, here's the edge that I want. Looks like they miter it out for you. Yeah. And you're done. I, I uh, routered this myself. Oh, that's, you did? You did the router part. That's why there's some mistakes. Yeah. It's yeah. not perfect. I was going to say, if I pay for pay for service, I, I might want a little bit better than... Yeah, you know. We're friends. You guys always give me a bad time. You're like, wow, that guy's a jerk. That interview guy's a jerk. We're friends. I hey, can give him, I can roast him. Cutting plastic is a little different than wood, okay? <laughs> that's all I, that's, that's something I learned. <laughs> so. All right, what's this? So this is the main light button. Okay. And it turns on a couple of lights. Inside of each drawer is a light. Uh -huh. And then there's a light underneath shining down to the ground. Okay. So you kind of light up. Oh, the ground around you because how often at night are you stumbling in the dark and so I wanted yeah, to be able to see. That's awesome. Also, if you have if you do have an an extra food or storage bin and you put it under there, you can you can see what's in that bin. Exactly. That's awesome. That's so, great. Yeah, so light down and these lights. What about this magic light here that I see? So this is the cooking light. So this one okay. turns on and it. and it lights up the cook space. I decided it was more important to see your food cooking than to see your dishes cleaned. So agreed. Agreed. I guess in I fact, could, could in fact, if you don't want to do the dishes, you just hit that button. And it magically disappears. <laughs> it just goes away. <laughs> because I'm thinking about it, uh, I'll mention it here. Um, if you can set up camp in less than 15 minutes, you're good. Uh, it, at least if you want to have a goal. Some people have different goals, of course. Because if you're jamming every single day, which sometimes you do. Like I 18 day trip down to Baja, I only had a, two days at one spot twice so you're moving all the time so you're setting up your kitchen every day a 20 minute setup will not abide you, you're not going to do 20 minutes so that's one of the that's one of the reasons this this is so awesome is because you know you set this thing up and you're like there's my chair there's my beer i'm good now there have been nights you talked about disappearing dishes where yeah the dishes will fit here and i just close the top and <laughs> <laughs> Shut it all up really fast. <laughs> it just went away. Awesome. So this is one big storage storage area. Right? Yeah, this is a big storage yeah, area right for on. utensils, cooking items, pots, pans. This thing's like amazing. So how, how long have you had this done? This is, it's been about four weeks. Right and on. This is how, how, many, how, many, how many road miles do you think you have with this? Probably. Like off-road miles. Off-road miles? Yeah. I would say probably 300. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah. This and is, do you uh, have any problems with things rattling, unrattling, or things that have become loose or things like that? No. The only problem I do have is is stuff will shift up here. Yeah. If I take a trail really hard and fast at 50 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. Which I never do. <laughs> right. That's that would be irresponsible. But uh, yeah, it'll just shift around. Cool. I mean, nothing breaks. Anything else we should know about the system? Any you know any learning you know or anything like that that you didn't expect or. Um, one is that it, when you're using this kind of product, it is like Tetris and you have to think five steps ahead because you may put this all together and realize you needed a T-nut right here. Uh -huh. But to get this T-nut off, you have to take this off and then you have to slide out this component yep. and then move something else and then slide in one T-nut to then reassemble it. So yeah. this thing has been together and taken apart like 10, 15 times. Brad, would you agree? My buddy Brad, Trail Recon, told me the exact same thing. So just expect that so you don't get too frustrated. It, it's, part, it's, part of the, it's part of crafting something yourself. And with these kind of hinges, I know a lot of people ask me about these coffee table, table hinges. Yep. Like I said, I put one on my coffee table. Yep. When you're using um, a skeleton structure like this, you have to build hard points uh -huh. for the hinges. So that's something else I, that blindsided me. Right. That I had to do a lot of work. But it, it, the solution turned out well, but it was like extra. But uh, I love the drawer, and I, it's been very functional and very awesome. useful. And, and it's, unlike me, it's easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's going to help me with my, with my drawer system in the 80. Let's do it. It's going to be, a, it's good. You guys are going to, you guys are going to see that. I, I'm, I'm in cutting out cardboard and creating templates mode right now. But it's going to happen. It's time. Grid paper and Oreos. It's all you need. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper could work. My brew of choice is Coke. But I used to drink Dr. Pepper. I switched. Political reasons. <laughs> this is... So, Dave, this is awesome, man. Um, this, is really, this is really cool. Thank you for sharing. Also, you know, uh, Dave's pretty open with everything that he does so that you guys can learn, too. So, thank you for, for doing that. Really appreciate it. Um, you'll answer some questions if they come in and mm -hmm. and uh, if you really want to get into deeper conversation that doesn't happen on YouTube it happens over on our forums so overlandbound.com slash forums and um, Dave will engage with you in conversation there if you have questions about building absolutely this because I yeah. a lot of this is not always original you know you steal ideas from others I saw yep. Brad's on Trail Recon Dave thank you so much man thanks You're for welcome. sharing really appreciate it all right